India. She is the founder of uh, Pondo, a social enterprise that works with sustainability, uh, alternative products for minist ministerial health management in India and South Asia market. Uh, and also, uh, it works in advocacy, policy, uh, and programming, and literacy in India. She will be sharing her experience in community initiative uh, for innovative, sustainable business, particularly in ministerial health space in India. The floor is yours, Party. Thank you so much, Tariq. Um, hi, my name is Bharti. I run an organization named Boond. Boond in India, in Sanskrit, means droplet, and we're trying to symbolize a blood, blood droplet, and that's what we're trying to do. And uh, since I've been here, a lot of people have asked me, what am I doing at the Environment Conference, uh, the, the uh, assembly here? And the simplest idea that we all have is that menstrual health has no correlation whatsoever with, uh, you know, menstrual health. And uh, in fact, and that's where we need to talk about innovative social businesses and enterprises that work in the space and uh, community, uh, you know, uh, changes and uh, uh, improvements in the same. Um, in India, uh, uh, you know, we were constantly at this, uh, you know, this this flux of development uh, where we're. Uh, constantly sidelining environmental outcomes and at Boone and other organizations across in India we're trying to see where positive public health and gender outcomes can be achieved by not sidelining the environment. Um, I'm sure you've all seen uh, the recent documentary that won the Oscars a couple of weeks ago called uh, the period uh, the end of uh, uh, a sentence. Uh, it was based off uh, uh, an Indian community uh, near the national capital region in Delhi and uh, this movie had a very western view towards menstrual health status in the country, uh, but it also spoke in length about a particular social uh, model, a business model that works in India quite rampantly. Uh, and this model is something that's very simple. They take these low-cost sanitary pad making units, take it to the community, uh, where it also provides livelihood opportunities for women to make these low-cost sanitary pads so that they can then go on and sell it within the community. Um, and and as, as a model, it might sound really great, but there are inherent problems to this model as well uh, because it completely uh, you know does not focus on uh, the problem of disposables that that disposal mechanisms for disposables in the country whatsoever or elsewhere in the world um, and also it doesn't account for the fact that a consumer or a beneficiary ought to have an informed choice uh, on a product or a behavior that they're choosing to adopt particularly with menstrual health and that agency is completely stripped off uh, in some sense so what are the solutions in that 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 sort of a space in the country that I come from um, is that sustainable businesses need to be sustainable for the health, for the environment, and for the economy. In, not for every stakeholder involved in the space, that's right from the beneficiary to the end consumer, to every menstruating person, to businesses, to manufacturers, to market, uh, uh, marketeers. And the only way to do that in the supply chain is also to ensure that the products and the behavioral patterns are also something that is sustainable for the communities that we live in, that is healthier, environmentally free, economically friendly, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so some of the things that have been working quite effectively in India is uh, a big group called the Green the Red Movement, which is a volunteer group based out of Bangalore in India. And what they do is they go and promote and propagate the use of sustainable alternatives, uh, something that we also do within our organization. Uh, one is called a menstrual Menstrual cup, as you guys can see, the one the one I'm holding in my hand is a menstrual cup. Uh, this is a cloth pad, and compared to a disposable sanitary pad, um, which has various problems, so I can't go into details about it. These are reusable. It's um, a couple of times uh, of a purchase through an entire menstruating life. Um, literally. Um, it cuts down the, the, the waste problem by 95%. The economy, the, uh, the per, per capita economy, uh, uh, economic uh, consumption is about nine, uh, reduced again by 95%. And it's far more healthier because it also provides the agency uh, for women to choose the product that they want, which is more comfortable for them. But notwithstanding all of that, it also changes the power game in such an extent that the people who use it, women and other menstruators, take control of the cleanliness and sterility of the product. Take control unlike of the cleanliness the and sterility. The, the, unlike of the, the, product, the disposable unlike alternatives. The previous, um, um, and these, these entrepreneurs are also working with models of micro-entrepreneurship where uh, the cloth pads can be made very well within homes or within small enterprises, uh, stitched, uh, beautifully uh, made, and uh, can be propagated along with a lot of activism 
and uh, uh, awareness that these organizations are indulging in as well. And uh, the CUPS, of course, cannot be made in-house, but however, along with the CUPS, a lot of programming is done in taking it to communities uh, to, to really address the waste issue and the health issue. And it, also be sh it has also been showing a fair amount of success in certain communities, from tribal communities to urban cities uh, to schools and colleges in India. Uh, but the most important thing I'd like to point out uh, in this space is that a lot of these enterprises are also struggling with, you know, complying with standards, uh, industrial standards for manufacturing any menstrual product and putting the onus of these enterprises that are working in very unconventional spaces, uncon unconventional ways to comply with such standards needs to be a little, uh, you know, uh, rethought about. And, uh, you know, we need a coalition. We need more support uh, from, from, uh, from a lot of spaces like this to be able to address the same. Um, and most importantly, the more, Im uh, the, the more common way in which uh, social businesses or uh, social enterprises seem to be thriving is through sampling, which is what disposable um, uh, 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 MNCs uh, that, that trade with uh, pads, per se, started out initially. And that seems to be a fairly uh, decent business model that works. Uh, summing it all up, in some sense, we need to work with, in the space of menstruation uh, because half the world menstruates. Uh, 355 million women in India alone menstruate. And um, a, a person generates over 150 kilograms of waste in their menstruating life. Uh, and uh, the kind of toxic plastic products that we wear close to very intimate parts of our bodies needs to be really reimagined. And uh, the businesses that exist that are far and few out there need to thrive and get out there and talk more positively about menstrual health. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bharti. It was a very good presentation about, uh, you know, maxing health uh, and it's the role of health on, on, on to, uh, in various business for sustainable development. Uh, uh, we will move to our colleague, uh, Noreen uh, Kennedy, as the next panelist, which is the Vice President of Environment, Energy, and Strategic International Engagement at the United States Council for International Business. Uh, Noreen has over 25 of experience as a lead environment, energy, and climate change expert. And also, she promotes the US business participations in international environment policy and management initiative, and works closely with industry, governments, and NGOs to promote sustainable development and green growth. She has served as a business and industry focal point in the UNIP MG, 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 uh, FS and as a coaches for that, for that group. Uh, she will be sharing about her experience 